All right, guys, it's uh, or and girls, I should say. Um, it's time for another Zoom. We've got um, a few things to get through before we get the coaching video. Um, hopefully, we've had the worst of the weather, but um, I haven't seen the latest forecast. Um, but yeah, the ovals are struggling a bit at the moment. Um, but we're on point pretty well, so need to keep keep that standard up. Um, just want to recognise Jacob Eichler on the boundary. He um, he did a Div One men's game a couple of weeks ago. His first one, uh, filling in at last minute, but uh, he stepped up to do that. So one of Jacob fiftieth uh, game. I saw him on the on the line. Um, Michael Jeske, obviously one of our field umpires. Um, originally came out from Clare, but uh, living down here in Adelaide now. So good to have Michael on board and. Clocks up the it clocks up the fiftieth game on the weekend before he goes travelling overseas. So um, well done to Michael. Two hundred games this weekend. Bruce Cameron, uh, Michael Jolly, both fieldies, uh, and a big six hundredth game to Ron Field in the goal. So uh, well done to you all. Uh, now I have mentioned this before. Um, just a reminder that there's no need to put in red or yellow cards into the any other issues section for the aftermatch administration and officials HQ. We're just going to change the heading so it says any other issues other than cards. Um, we run a report every Monday morning and at the moment we're getting um, too many umpires writing yellow cards um, or red cards when there's other sections for that. Um, anyway, uh, unless you, you do have one player get the two yellow cards is worth probably mentioning it there. So we just make sure that, that player gets a one week suspension. All right, let's get to that time of year where we talk about finals and grand finals. It's uh, not this weekend, but the next weekend that uh, women's finals get underway. So it's an exciting time of the year. And I think we've got four rounds left for most of the grades of men, five for the Divi one. But um, I'll put in uh, a few criteria for um, what we're looking for for umpires to be able to do a grand final. This year, I do this every year. It's pretty similar, just a couple of slight alterations. So um, you can expect to be appointed to a grand final if you've done these things. So have attended at least 10 umpires training sessions, as in Adelaide Footy League training sessions, up until the end of July. So I'm going to attach a list to the uh, email that gets sent out. You can see if you've achieved that um, criteria. Um Umpired at least one Division Four men's a men's A grade game, so that's Divis one, two, three, or four men's A grade game, or at least one Division One women's game. So it's basically um, rewarding the uh, umpires of umpired at a higher level. Um, obviously, have umpired well during both the minor and major round, and um, Importantly, our members of the Umpires Association. So if you haven't yet joined up, you're running out of time to do it, but we'll put a list in again of the email. Um, so field umpires who do not fulfill this criteria can still be appointed to a grand final if there are enough umpires who are unavailable underperform. Um, coaches will not automatically qualify for a grand final, but may be used if additional umpires are required or in some cases, um, to provide extra experience for specific games. So um, the coaches are um, may or may not be used, um, but for the rest of you, um, if you've ticked all those boxes, as long as you keep performing well, um, a grand final will be uh, there for you at the end. But you know, for those others of you, um, you just never know what might, might come. Uh, so yes, I talked about the Umpires Association membership. Um, we'll add, add a current list to the email that goes out. Um, not only um, will it make you um, eligible to umpire a grand final, but we've got the presentation down at the end of the year. You get a reduced price on that ticket. So, and obviously supporting the, the association um, for all they do for the group, uh, important, especially if you're a training umpire. So it's just an expectation that everyone does it. Um, all right, that's all I have in my notes. Has anyone got any questions or comments before we get to the coaching video? Anything that would happen from the weekend? 
Everyone's pretty happy. Port's winning. Crows are winning. David Bales is back. He's just sent me a text message. He's been overseas for last month and um, he's back in town. He's a Bomber supporter, so uh, he's not so happy about that, but we'll get to see Bales out of training this week. Matt Harris, I see you unmute yourself. Yeah, um, Steph and I at Broadview, we could not hear the siren at all. So when the game finished, we neither of us knew the game had finished. Um, we just went off what the players were screaming about. Just something for you guys to know. Well, at the end of the day, that, that just needs to go into Fisher's HQ, mate, and the, any other issues section. And yeah. the, league, the league can take notice of that. And yep. if there's enough people that put in it, then you would hope something is done. But yeah, I, I need you just to, um, yeah, put that into the into the uh, in, into Fisher's HQ. Um, Howie, who is Howie? Yes, that's me, Colin. Howard Noble. <laughs> I, I've never called you Howie in my life. I, yeah, it's not only only a select few that do. Okay. Um, I just, I was out at Pulteney on the weekend with Josh. Not to say Josh is a very fine umpire, nice young man to umpire with, which is great. Josh Johnson? But, yes, correct. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, now um, the point, um, so I was there three weeks ago, obviously back again on the weekend, but no hot water in the umpire's rooms for showers or um, actually even in Woody South, I think we're also having a big whinge about it. and. I did kind of think that potentially a, might be an association issue, but uh, just for feedback like that, it, it, th as I said to the Pulteney guy, I was here three weeks ago and it was the same story. Um, but it just... Right, was, so, yeah. So, again, like the league don't know about it if you don't put it in a fish's HQ. So okay. It needs to go in there any other issues, which is ah, okay. get through the office. That's what yeah. that... You know, I don't want... People saying there's a red card, a yellow card, and any other issue section because we already know that there's a yellow or red card. Uh, agree. Well, other totally. issues like that, but they are then tabled to you know John Kennehan, Aaron Jones, uh, G, uh, Nick, all the guys in the office, and you tell me on a Zoom, um, I'll probably forget about it. Um, you know, really, at the end of the day, that's what that's what the reports in the official HQ are for. Yeah. Um, and you are right if there's a a big concern about change room facilities. Uh, it's worth raising with the Empire Association and maybe they can work with the league to, um, I, I guess, you know, there are some um, difficulties with a club like Pulteney. I know for a fact how much uh, they want to upgrade those facilities and because the sand yeah. flies are there. And so the, what holds them back is the LA City Council reducing development. And I, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be able to find a way to have hot showers, but, you know, like they would love better facilities. And so sure. uh, I guess, um, yeah, there's, there's some clubs it's a little bit more difficult than others, but at the same time, yeah, you have a right to, to ask for those things. And if you keep raising it in officials HQ, raise it through Gory, the Upper Association, Hopefully something can be done about it. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, anyone else? Um, I did note it in the last week, just um, especially with this muddy, muddy conditions. Um, if you're cleaning off your boots or, you know, you, you've got a whole lot of mud on you that you're trying to clean off, if you are using the, now, ideally, you, you hit your shoes together outside on other mud, and and um, you know if you happen to clean stuff off in the in the change rooms and the showers, just make sure you don't leave a mess. Um, and yeah, the, there was one club where a mess was left, and it didn't reflect well on us. So just uh, keep that in mind. Um, anything else? All right. Somebody who would have um, seen the coaching video would notice it's from last year. Um, that's deliberate um, because the video is on control general play and we don't actually have um, a coaching session for this year's coaching sessions with that, um, with that subject. And there's just some really good examples on that video that, I'd revisit. So I know some of you have said it before, 
but the guys that are doing their first year especially um there'll be um some good examples and for for the rest of you just a, a reminder of some of these really good messages and you know the one of the most important things about control about um a game is keeping control um and there's just some good um hints or um messages in here um all right jamie thompson do you want to unmute yourself is that is that a live background oh that's a that's a picture from a previous trip i think i was gonna say you were there recently were you yeah last week yeah so that that just tell us about that trip so we um my father loves going to the Simpson Desert, so we try to try to fit in some type of four wheel drive trip each each year. So this year we went up to Dow Helsley Springs, went 100 k's into the desert, then we crossed into what's called the Colson Track and followed that all the way up to one of the other lines that crosses the desert called the Madigan Line. And, but then from there we took a we just we went north and went a little bit further up into the Northern Territory and toured around the um lower part of the west mcdonald ranges yeah nice and and um can i i'm guessing the weather was pretty good out there yeah um yeah typical for the desert very very cold at night but very pleasant during the day 26 degrees so it's it's yeah as soon as the sun as soon as the sun goes down the temperature plummets but yeah really, i think the last the last night where we camped in a creek bed in owen springs and most of us had frost on our swags the next day so it, was, it, it got obviously got down to freezing that night so yeah okay no, we're, we're all used to that so so even it gets even cooler at night up there than it is here just to be oh, during the day yeah well if you know you, it's because we're not far from alice springs in that area and alice, alice springs is bitterly cold in winter so. oh, very good all right you, you, um, just a, you just a comment, up on mute, comment, mate. um you, so sample umpires are moving to westminster from next year uh it's not totally confirmed. I think that's um, a high possibility. They were testing it out recently, but yes, it's a good chance that that will happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, because that was the information that came through to me was that next next year all training will be at Westminster. So I think I think it's highly likely. Yeah, and um, yeah, they're just frustrated with the Adelaide City Council not being able to develop their change rooms there. All right, mate, you can do the first example. Have you seen them yet? Yes. Yeah, I watched. I watched it earlier today. So. Beautiful, mate. You can take the first one. When we finally get there. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, so I watched this a couple of times and I yeah, and I, I showed my son that plays out at Only Jets and we both had a bit of a snigger about it. So yeah, I think that's just a bit of a warning there. He, he didn't throw the ball with particular force. Yeah, and so I would have come yeah. in and said, you know, any any more of that and it's a free kick. So, wrong answer, Jamie. Uh, too kind, mate. Got to get a bit of mango on you. That's unacceptable. Throwing <laughs> the ball in the face of opposition plays an automatically free kick. No, okay. All right. So, yep. um, that's, yeah, Greg chose to ignore it. You chose to ignore it. Well, I'm telling you that that's not what we want. We want to take no shit. If they're going to do that, you take control by paying a free kick to show that it's unacceptable. And by you taking control, it doesn't. it means the opposition player doesn't take control and then start a fight. All right. Yep. Fair enough. Um, okay. I'm not going to ask Mark Goods the next one. And for those of you that would have been on the call in the past, you'll know why. Uh, maybe Brendan Smiles. Yep. Have you had a look yet? No, I haven't. All right. See, okay. see if you can make it this one. Oh, actually, sorry. I'll, it must be the next one that I'm talking about for Goodsy. This is. Um, might be a bit hard for you to see this one. Hey, right, I'll come back to you, Brendan. It's probably a bit All hard, right. a bit uh, tough for you to answer that one. Um, Alex Haugie. Alex. Now, I know he's got kids. Perhaps they're keeping him. Sorry, 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 Colin. Trying to unmute. I'm just in a car. Um, <laughs> It, that's the one. That's the one. I think uh, the West Croydon player punched the Trinity player, so prohibited contact was um, was given. Is that that one? Yeah, whether whether it's a punch or just a vigorous push, um, it's yeah. just 
it's just a good control free. Um, there's a bit of angst on on the ground. Rashi gets him to use his voice to communicate and sees that vigorous push, whether you call it a punch or a push, if it's a punch. I, it was it, it was it was hard to tell. It was hard yeah. to tell when I was watching it on the video. But yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I did I did see something. Yeah, right, it's again, but it was good. It was good. Good yeah. to be in there. It's just in one of those instances where you're taking control. Again, you can sense that the players aren't focusing on the footy. Um, and, you know, if they just go slightly overboard there, um, no problem with paying a free kick. I mean, there are times yeah, when... You. Yeah, sorry, right? Oh, sorry, I think if later on in the video, you'll probably find out that there was at least one yellow card given during that game as well, so... Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah that's right, yeah. It was it kept them on their toes, but uh, I think it was Rashi and maybe Simo did that grand final. Uh, did a good job of it. All right, Brendan, unmute yourself again, mate. Yep. All right. So this is the one that um, I was going to get you to comment on. All right, what'd you make of that? Yeah, the, just no need for that. The ball was out of play. Everyone just needed to get back in their positions, and he's just taken an opportunity for a cheap shot to push uh, his team, uh, the opposition, over, so he can't get back up and get into the play. Yeah, hundred percent. There's just no need for it. Running from behind. Um, yeah, good, good control free kick. Yeah. All right, let's run through. There's a fair, a fair few examples here. Fair few messages. So I'll just let it run. And uh, sort of talk as we go. Um, but yeah, control general play is about yeah just doing what you can to keep the players focused on the footy, not fighting to themselves. So when it matters, NC is the key. So this one's quite a dangerous bump. It doesn't get him in the head, but geez, it was close, and the players aren't happy with it. So just you can obviously see there's a bit of uh, vigor there. Matt does really well to get in there, use his voice, pay the free kick, obviously. So when you play a high tackle or, or some a, a, a bit of contact like that, just sprint in. So this one here, Joel plays a high fend off. Um, bit slow in actually getting in there, but Joel suddenly realises they're on the ground. There's a, there's a bit of a um, potential for it to develop. So that's what you do need to get over Lockie eventually does do and make your presence felt and communicate. So this is a really big message for first year umpires. Um, delay your vision on the ball uh, on the player. Don't follow the ball. So, as a spectator or a player, you tend to just follow the ball. In that instance, there is a quite a, a big high tackle after his handball. If you're focusing on the ball, potentially miss that type of free kick. Probably should have been paid down the field, although it's only five meters away. But um, it was good the free kick was paid. So similarly here. Um, there's a late bump. In fact, I think um, Stefan had a really good delay of the vision there and saw it, paid the free kick down, and Matt backed him up. This is in a Div 1 grand final and came in and gave a yellow card. So just really good teamwork there. But both umpires kept their eyes on the uh, last act of play uh, and were able to see that, that contact here. Greg just delays his vision enough to see the, um, the push. So any sort of contact where it puts a player to the ground after the handball or kick need to be paying a free kick and if it's if it's vigorous enough it can be uh, a yellow or if it hits him in the head it can be a red card so you just need to be alert don't switch off so this one here uh brightly burn i think it's an umpire just a late hit again he's uh, just no need for it i mean players you know, bumping is a pretty silly option these days if if they're if they want to avoid free kicks, they should be smothering or not bumping, but um, you just got to watch out for that late contact. Here the ball comes free. And again, a bump that after he's handballed and that one's paid down the field. And because there's a free kick paid, because the umpire takes control, the players move on with it. It's when you miss those ones that they're, they're, they're going to continue on. So be strong, be assertive and take no shit. So this one here, just another example of delaying uh, um, your vision on the last act of play. 
kick, bump, light bump, play downfield. I think it's near the end of my grandpa's. There's a bit of celebration going on, um, but um, good free kick. So similarly here, that's uh, Amin Shahadi still doing the late bump. Lara, she's improved a bit this year. She's been a bit of a, a bit of a worry in the past, but uh, a late bump after the after the kick. Um, Matt Brown, I think, is umpire there. Pay this is downfield. So taking positive action when required. This is the all about taking control of a game. So we all like letting the play go, and if the players are playing footy, no need to get involved. But when they do things outside the laws, like here, late bump, just no need for that. Bumping into the ground. Um, Cam pays it downfield. I would expect the other umpire, whoever that is, to have come in and helped control that situation because obviously there's a bit of retaliation going on there. Um, so similarly here, late bump. Just anything slightly late, you pay it down. Smitty's happy with it and move down. If there's any further um, sort of interaction between those two players, you'd want to get over there. So just a late contact. And this is where you'd want to get in. So if you if you gave a yellow card so bad, Stefan's okay with just playing a free kick. Either way is fine. But you need to be there. You, you need to get over there and have a presence and at the very least pay for a kick. Make sure you're speaking to offended, offending players, making sure you're letting them know what they've done wrong. I think this is a dangerous tackle. Um, possibly could be a yellow. Um, I would say probably should be a yellow these days. Back then it was maybe just a free kick, but um, at least Rob paid the free kick. He's right there. Um, making it clear what he paid it for. Um, this West Point player, I think that's where a yellow card was given. So some of those late hits where they're just done, you know, you can tell they've, they've lost the sight of actually going for the footy and they're just uh, imposing their presence. Just you need you need to let them know it's not acceptable. So you be aware of what's happening around and stay alert at all times. Um, so again, some good examples, good messaging. I just thought it was a good video to show um, to remind you of how to keep keep a game under control. Any questions or comments on that? Um, probably one thing I probably need to um, make mention when we're talking about grand final. So we are jumping ahead a, a bit, um, especially aimed at sort of the umpires doing div one men's at the moment. Um, I'm just. With the observations coming back from coaches, um, we're up on pretty well um, on the whole. And it seems that, uh, yeah, the scores that I get are a bit of a reflection, help me separate the umpires. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be telling the guys that end up with the Div 2 grand final that any other year they would have done a Div 1 grand final. And there's guys that won't be doing Div 1 finals that any other year they would have been. So what I guess I'm saying is the feedback I'm getting, the scores I'm getting from the observers are higher than in the past, which is a credit to the group. It's a credit to the fact that we've got more umpires in contention. Uh, it just means I've got to um, set realistic examples. So some of you may end up in a slightly lower grade than you have in the past, or some of you may not get grand finals, or you know, I, I, it's, it's good for the group. Um, and you know, <laughs> when we get closer, I'll certainly be having individual chats, but I'm just putting putting everyone on notice that, um, yeah, the standard has been raised this year. All right, that's all I got for you. Um, let's uh look forward to coming together on Wednesday and um, and uh, another big round of footy coming up, and the week after that, we start heading into finals for women's finals. So Getting to that was that exciting time of year.